of the state of Michigan. He graduated from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology uh, with a BS in 1969, and he received his law degree from George Washington University in 1972. Mr. Heckman returned to Grand Rapids after serving in the Navy. Uh, Randy took a job as prosecuting attorney in Grand Rapids, a job which he left when he was elected probate juvenile judge in 1975. Randy has so many interests and accomplishments accomplishments, I cannot list them all. On a personal note, he is married to his wife, Marsha, and they have 12 children and 21 grandchildren and another one on the way. How do you keep on working? She really stole my thunder, but uh, <laughs> let me introduce the mother of those 12. I mean, some people think She actually had each one, one by one. No twins, no triplets. So. And uh, therefore, you know, we have good reason to believe that uh, we need to do something about the debt that's already been talked very eloquently about. And with the two minutes that I have, I'm just going to skip through what we have to do here. But just, we get asked as we go around the country, of course, you know, what, why, why are we running? You know, what, what's the purpose of doing that? And well, as I began to look at who I am, which is God has wired me as, as a fixer. I, I almost like problems, to be honest with you. In fact, I ran for judge at age 27 in Kent County because I wanted to fix the juvenile court, which was not doing what it ought to do. And after 15 years, I left that to start Michigan Family Forum, which wasn't, didn't exist, so in a sense, that was a, a big fix to start something, and it's still operating today. I'm doing a fairly decent job with my friends still running it. Um, I've run some other nonprofits since then as well. I left the judgeship in 1990. I've run two other nonprofits, both of which were really in some major trouble, and I was able to come in and make some major changes, and they're operating well at this point. Well, we got a major problem to fix. It's been so eloquently described by the Congresswoman. Thank you for doing that. It's such a great job of describing our debt, $14.3 trillion debt that grows by the rate of $4 billion every day. That truly is unsustainable. We got to deal with that. Well, you know. We're so proud of the leadership here in Michigan. Thank you for our Secretary of State, for our Governor, who we heard up in Mackinac Island, our Lieutenant Governor, and for our Attorney General, and for our legislators who are here. These are, these are heroes. I just commend each one of our legislators who's voting a great sacrifice, really, to themselves. In fact, I think we should just applaud. I'd like to take five seconds. <laughs> well, we need that kind of leadership in Washington. Leadership is critical. We have these critical problems. We need the leadership in Washington. We do not have that. We don't have that with our Senate. We have it in our House of Representatives. They're trying their best with the Ryan Plan, which I fully support. In fact, if anything, it's, it needs to be put on steroids. We need to do even quicker than what, what that package would call for, in my humble opinion. But the Senate needs to become Republican majority, and we need a, a Republican in the White House to avert the, the, the danger that we're heading toward. You know, it was 50 years ago. It was 50 years ago that we had a Democratic president who said, ask not what your country will do for you, but ask what you should do for your country. Now we have a president. I wish he would say that. I wish we had a Democratic president say that. Instead, he says, ask and you will receive. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, we're just teaching, we're just throwing fish at people instead of teaching them how to fish. In my opinion, we really need to reform the welfare system. We're a welfare state at this point. We're really hurting the very people we want to help. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to get into all of my plans in that area, but that's huge, is that we really want to help people and not just make them dependent upon government. You know, if you don't have the freedom to fail, you really don't have the freedom to succeed. Failure is not fatal unless we give up. Just think of Abraham Lincoln, how many times he failed before then he was elected president. Well, my wife and I, we've uh, raised 12 kids, and uh, they're, none of them are perfect, none of them walk on water, but they're all succeeding. Their marriages are working. we got a lot of grandkids and more to come, they tell me. And, uh, and we're in for the long haul. I've got to quit at this point. We're in for the long haul. We desperately need your help. But we believe that with your help and with the blessing of God, we're going to win. Amen. Thank you so much.